Hey, Courtney, good to see you. Uh, likewise. So what's going on? I hear it's been hot in Australia. Yeah, that's a uh, understatement. I mean, yesterday was the hottest ever average day in Australia, you know, across the board. I think it was um, over 40 uh, at all weather stations. So it's, um, like you said just before, it's probably good Kona training weather, but maybe a little bit early in the year. Uh, in terms of um, your workouts, what did you have to do yesterday or were you on a lighter schedule? No, no, I'll, I'll be completely honest. My yesterday, I, I was, um, you know, I'm obviously just very early in my start of my preparation for the year, so I'm kind of in just pretty low-key base training. So I had a, uh, a 20K run in the forest where I just did two 5K kind of tempo efforts in that and, you know, pretty pretty cruisy, but it's so hot it, it still drains you. And then um, at lunch, I, I live on a freshwater lake, so, you know, in summer I do 99% of my swimming open water. So I jumped in the lake and um, I probably swim about three, three kilometers or a couple of miles or whatever and... Um, yeah, pretty much just continual swimming. And then in the afternoon at the moment, I'm having fun on, on a mountain bike. So doing something a little bit different and just, again, you know, keep, keeping the interest for me, um, you know, in the off season, just keeping a bit of interest in the sport, learning something new and trying to get my skill level up. Uh, in terms of learning something new, have you been up to any adventures, maybe through your sponsor, Red Bull, that have, has nothing to do with running, biking or swimming, <laughs> like jumping out of a capsule in outer space or anything along those lines? Uh, not, not quite jumping out of the capsule out of space. I know, I know next week we, it's um, you know I'm super stoked because Red Bull just took over um, you know the Australian I suppose it's the Australian equivalent of what NASCAR is in America. Um, the V8 supercars here, Red Bull have just you know have got their own team here now. So next week I'm going up to the factory and meeting the guys, telling them what, you know what it's like to be a Red Bull athlete and what we've done because it's it's I suppose it's new to them, but I'm I'm kind of like this B grade sport guy who's been with Red Bull for over ten years, and I'll I'll head up there and uh, you know talk about it with them. So you know there's some pretty cool opportunities come out come mm -hmm. out of it. And Will you get to drive a car? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, maybe. Maybe not next week. I, I doubt they'll let me get in one of their cars at the moment. But um, you know, that's something you know in the future. I'd, I'd definitely. I mean, there's some amazing things I've got the opportunities. You know, it, Red Bull for me has been, you know, on one hand, just an amazing backer and sponsor. But um, you know, the opportunities that I've had to do with them. I've been up in, uh, you know, acrobatics planes. I've been up with the world hand gliding champion in the double. Um, you know, stuff that you can't pay for really. And uh, you know, so. It's it's definitely been you know something that has made my career in triathlon all the more interesting. The fact that I've got this outside, you know, extreme interest as well coming from this company, so uh, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I've, word has it that Red Bull is actually not just an interesting sponsor, but actually a fairly loyal sponsor. So that's really good to have. Um, talking about you in terms of what are you getting ready for? When is your first race, and how are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm feel, I'm feeling great. I mean, it's the Australian summer, so it's always perfect. Our off season is it, it, always perfect training because it's hot, it's sunny, it's holidays, and um, you know, getting out and doing stuff's really easy to you know get back into training. So for me, um, you know, last year for me, I actually saw it as you know, although the results, um, you know, I wasn't on the Olympic podium. For me, it was actually a really successful year. So, uh, you know, and I and I thought about what I was going to do after the year and thought about my career direction and what I was going to do. And you know what? I just love the sport still. I love getting out there and training. And, uh, you know, for me now, it's probably more going back to my roots of where I, I started as a junior. And, you know, I'm going to start looking at doing some, some different stuff um, away from the ITU. Um, so 70.3 is probably later, you know, middle of the year and, um, you know, I'm even actually thinking about maybe just for the moment looking at some exterior stuff and just keep while I'm getting myself fit for the, you know, I suppose the end of the season when the, the money end of the season, um, you know, just keeping myself doing something different. I mean, that's the challenge. I spent eight years focused on, you know, Olympic preparations and that gets very, very... Yeah, you know, it's all very, very staged in a way. Is probably maybe not the best word, but you just turn up. There's event after event. You're chasing points. There's you know everything that goes along with it, and then you're at the greatest show on earth, the Olympic Games, and suddenly it's over. So, right. um, 
you know, yeah, it, it's, it's like Christmas. I, I actually, again, it's a lot to like Christmas. So, you know, there's this massive build-up to the Olympic Games. You race and then it's over. <laughs> it's like going to a party. And, um, you know, I suppose what you do next after that is, is the, uh, you know, the big question. How do you, you know, what do you do? And for me, it was easy. It was like finally I'm in a weird way. I'm free. Um, I can do what, what the hell I want. So, um, mate, I've been having a ball. Uh, although... I will tell you, it didn't start so great. I, I finished, um, obviously, the Olympic campaign was over last year. Did a couple of triathlons to finish the year in pretty good form. And then um, I'd, I'd signed up with Rex Owner to do this uh, Mark Webber Challenge, which is a five-day adventure race in Tasmania. And um, I'd been on my mountain bike, you know, for a couple of weeks and got a bit confident and went over the handlebars and broke my wrist. So... It, as quick as it started, it kind of ended, but I still went down to Tassie and um, with a cast on completed a lot of the event, which was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, that kind of, I suppose, you know, wet the lips for doing some different stuff in the future. No, absolutely. Um, you mentioned 70.3 races. Um, do you have any ones already in sight or is that still open? Yeah, it's a little bit open. I mean, um, initially, the great thing with 70.3 being an Australian is that there's so much racing now here in Australia and I suppose Asia, Hawaii, you know, within our area that's um, accessible without needing to be in Europe or America all year round. So, you know, that's super appealing to me, having a family, got two young kids and um, obviously love Australia, but still want to travel the world to an extent and, and race these races. So, um, you know, initially it will be probably a Asia Australian based, um, to get, to get some points. And I mean, I'd love to qualify just whether or not the, the timing works, but the goal would be the world championships in Vegas. So we'll just see how it is. I mean, first, first things first is, you know, setting up the season like any other year and, and doing the base work and getting fit. And then, um, you know, it's been a long, I've only really raced one half properly in my life and I did it quite well. I actually probably think I'm more suited to half racing than I have been to the Olympic distance, you know, because all three legs are quite strong. You know, I've never been a pure runner or you're a cyclist. So it's, um, for me, it's actually quite appealing to, to now be doing, going back down the line where I started in non-drafting. Oh, and plus maybe we now get to see some videos from your bike again. Maybe, maybe there's some new events. You know, I always say with the, with, with, when I, I was the, first, I suppose I was the first one in, in, in the ITU style racing in triathlon anyway, to put the camera on the bike and actually show what it was like in there. But, um, Hey, it's, it's like anything, is it? The first person to do it, you get all the things and then suddenly everyone was doing it and, and realistically, I mean, unless you're catching crashes, each race is pretty much the same. You're looking at a whole heap of guys' asses, <laughs> little bumps. And um, uh, so for me, it kind of lost the appeal of the video thing and let other people go and do what they wanted to do with it. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll have some other stuff coming out because, you know, there's some there's stuff I'm doing at the moment that's a bit different that I'd like to share. Cool. Uh, in terms of, uh, do you go back one more to the middle distance racing? Um, I guess you're going to be running into guys like Simon Whitfield, Ivan Ranian, and some other folks you're familiar with. Will that be funny to see them in a different arena? Uh, not, not really. I mean, for me, the exciting bit is we... Uh, I've been pretty – because I've gone down the ITU track here in Australia, I mean, I've been pretty isolated. I grew up as a junior with the guys who have gone on to dominate, um, well, you know, the Maccas, the Crowies, the Greg Welshers. You know, I was a young teenager when they were really kicking off their careers. So, um, you know, I've gone on to watch them and gone down a different path but still always – you know, having grown up with them and seeing what they've done, um, you know, have always nearly wanted to put my finger in that pie as well because it's it's what I grew up doing. It's what I, why I started triathlon. You know, if you gave me the choice of, um, you know, going and racing in Hamburg in a wetsuit in the cold in the middle of a European city, or or racing on an Indonesian island or Hawaii or somewhere, I, I'll tell you straight away, I'll be on the island. You know, that's. I started the sport as a summer sport, non-drafting, and that's what appealed to me in the sport. Um, fortunately, the Olympics did come along, and that here in Australia is, you know, it's 
in sport in Australia, you know, the Olympic Games is the biggest thing. And, um, you know, for me to, for the last past two Olympics, being the best Australian um, at, at the Olympic Games for the men, um, you know, it, it's been successful and done me well. So, but now it's time to move on to something different. Um, all well on the sponsor front for you? Yeah, look, I've been, I've been really lucky. Well, I shouldn't say lucky. I think, you know, you, you make your own luck. So, um, you know, I've had great backing right throughout my career. Um, obviously, for those who don't know, my career actually started when in, here in Australia in summer, I was only a teenager. I came straight out of school into our Grand Prix series and, um, you know, Brad Bevan, Greg Welsh, Miles Stewart, all these guys were winning that at that stage and I suppose that's all I knew in triathlon. So my first, um, you know, eight years in the sport of triathlon revolved around racing here on TV in Australia and trying to beat the likes of, you know, the guys that you knew in America. Um, and I suppose it, it, I did that really well. I went on to win five titles after Brad Bevan um, went through his series and, and that's kind of where I made my career. So uh, down here in Australia, you know, I've had backing ever since the days of, you know, when we were public property on TV and, um, you, you know, the loyalty of those sponsors have continued with me on the Olympic pathway and, and now they're backing me to go off and have, a, you know, I shouldn't say have some fun, but actually go off and, you know, chase some of the things that excite me. So, um, you know, at the moment, with Red, continuing with me, uh, um, obviously Red Bull, I've been over a decade with them. At the moment, I've got Qantas Airways who went with us right through to the Olympic Games, continuing on, um, you know, I get... Drive around turbo Subaru cars when I'm flogging the way out to the forest, and uh, you know I've been an Oakley athlete I think for over 14 years now. I mean I I can't complain. The sport's been absolutely uh, brilliant to me. Well, you know what we should do is we should kind of check in with you maybe uh, maybe in mid summer here, so July, August or something, just to see how your progress is going. And uh, meanwhile, though, thanks for your time, and we'll talk hopefully again sometime soon. Absolutely, any time, um, and you know I will be. I'm sure I'll be over in America uh, sometime this year. And and like I said, I, 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 I'm not I'm not silly enough to say you know we're going to go from ITU athletes to long course athletes and dominate in a year. But um, it's something that's really appealing to me, and it's kind of nice to get back to the, you know, the grassroots of what you know triathlon was to me. So Excellent. look forward to the states. That sounds really good. So stay co stay cool in that hot weather, and we'll talk soon. Okay, cheers. See ya. Thanks, sir.